So I want to kind of unpack a little thought here. And Lynn, that sounds really good if you want to keep that up for a little bit. So, But otherwise, I think we're... Um, did you guys ever have a grandpa that read you stories at bedtime? Did you ever have somebody in your life that read you stories? How about they told you stories? Now, I realize some of us come from broken homes and that isn't, doesn't fit. But in many circles that are healthy, healthy families, we have grandpas and we have daddies and mommies who read us stories. I used to read John and Luke and Marcus and Lydia. I used to read them from the Chronicles of Narnia. And I'm thinking, Gosh, I don't even get this stuff, you know? I don't know how much they're getting. And then they tell me, oh, Dad, you remember, you know, when and that guy did this? And it's like, uh, I was just reading because I wanted to spend a little time with you. You know, and just kind of spend time. But there's always a little bit of assimilating of whatever's happening in the story. But I think the biggest thing is just hanging out. Just having dad and kid time, grandpa kid time, you know? It's that bonding that's happening. It's building a bridge. It's building a framework. It's a building an undergirding, a girding up network or capacity that's going to carry some bigger cargo later on in life. And so dad, grandpa, mommy, daddy, or grandma, whatever, they tell these stories. And are those stories always true? Are they always true? How about when the little kid says, uh, hey, daddy, would you tell me another scary story? Or daddy, make up another story. Well, what's the worth of that? I mean, like, what could that possibly do? How constructive or, or eminently positive or important could that be in someone's life? You tell them a story you just made up? You see, little Johnny, <laughs> little Susie, is learning the, the way grandpa, daddy, mommy, grandma's heart is processing. Oh, I see how daddy took the story over like this. And, oh, and he thought this and then, oh, he came up with a good ending. And see, he's learning just tons of stuff, tons of stuff. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of relevance to life. It's not going to help you get a job. It's probably not going to help you directly pay your bills. Although, if I have a healthy personality and character, that becomes the framework upon which the heavier stuff of life can rest and be carried. Now, some of you are real smart and you know where I'm going, but I'm going to do one more thing. Some of you have heard this, so bear with me. But little Johnny goes to kindergarten. Is that when they learn alphabet? Okay. So now Johnny, remember the lines go like boom, 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 and then boom like this. That's your writing tablet, right? Okay, now Johnny, the first letter in the alphabet is a slanted line up like that from the bottom one to the top one. Well, you know, little Johnny, he tries that over here, and he's going, uh, 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 you know, he finally gets up there, you know. And then the teacher says, Johnny, now you come another one down over like this. It's slanted. Okay, now there's one more Johnny, one more line. It's right here. And that's going to be an A, Johnny. That's an A. That's really, really important. Johnny's like, important? For what? I play trucks and cops and bad guys and G.I. Joes. And I go dig holes out in the woods, you know, and I, I, that's what I do. What could that ever do for my life? That has no relevance. How does that fit? Teacher says, just hang with me, Johnny. We're going to go somewhere because you thought that was hard. I'm sorry. Just hang with me. We got 25 more of these things. This one is straight, and then two curved lines. Not complete circles, but two. That's number two of the 26. Oh, 
Sony's like, come on, teacher. Can we just go out and play Duck, Duck, Goose or, you know, climb on the monkey bars or can we do something that's constructive in this life? Why do I have to learn this crazy stuff? Has no understanding for the relevance, the application of where that's going to fit in his life. He doesn't know. It's teacher knows more than he does, right? And finally then, teacher's got all these down and Johnny's doing a pretty good job you know the lines are squiggly and they don't look real great but pretty soon then teacher says now Johnny we're gonna learn to put those were those letters into words this means cat <gasps> Johnny well I know what a cat is of course we got a cat at home that's cool that means cat that's crazy. I had no idea you could say cat on a whiteboard like that. That is so cool. But still, I'd much rather be playing cops and bad guys or something, you know. I like to do what I like to do, you know. Johnny says, well, I'm sorry. You got 12 more years of this. So, <laughs> and pretty soon Johnny's finding out that C-A-T becomes sentences. <gasps> You mean a string of words together? I can say something? Like, for instance, I walked in. Where's, uh, is uh, Charlie in here? My little buddy Charlie's right. He's one of my grandchildren. I walked into my house the other night, and they had come to our house before we got there. On the front door was a post-it. It had all the names of the family. Daddy, come here, Charlie. Would you mind? You want to come up here? Come on. Come on. Good boy, this is my, this is my good buddy. Yeah, he's my good buddy. You better believe it. Okay, so little, little Charlie, he, he wrote, uh, let's see, Daddy and Mommy, and who else did you have on that post-it? Who else did you write? Oliver. Oliver, yeah. And? Charlie yep. and Ellie. Yep. Did you have Grandpa on there? Uh, I don't know if that was on there. It's only... The family of us. That's right. <laughs> See, he's learning stuff. Now, you know, it wasn't the greatest penmanship, but boy, was it important, this little guy. And so when I got into the kitchen, Debbie had made some chili, and right on the counter next to the chili kettle was another post-it, and it said, what did it say on that one? Happy family. That's right, it did. It said, happy family. I knew what it said. It was a little scribbly, but I knew exactly what it said. He's doing good. Little Johnny, little Charlie, is growing up. He's learning how to put those crazy lines into meaning. Well, one of these days, thank you, good buddy. You did awesome. I love you. Yeah, good job. One of these days, <laughs> one of these days, that little guy is going to spin sentences together. He's going to write contracts. Maybe he'll take after his daddy and he'll be a contractor and write contracts with numbers and then more letters and high-level stuff, you know, and he's going to do the, the big stuff of life with stuff that seems so non-essential or non-applicable or relevant. It, like, what does this apply to? Okay, let's go back to the stories now, and these kind of going to tie together. Grandpa telling stories, daddy telling stories, right? And little Johnny says, well, what is all this about? I think that's what's happening with us in times like this. It may feel kind of ethereal, kind of out there a little bit. And are we sure? Does this really matter? Is this really applying? Is this for something? Unto something? What is this for? And I think God says, well, little Johnny, little Marky boy, you just hang tight with me. I got about 12 more years of this. <laughs> and, and don't be hard on yourself. Uh, like my little buddy, Charlie, his letters didn't look anything like that. But I could understand them. And right now, tonight, Father God's probably saying, well, that wasn't exactly the way I saw it. Boy, do I love that. Oh, that was so cool. You guys did so good. He's just applauding us from heaven. Angels, come here, take a look at this. Oh, man, you know, heaven is just coming in one filled with applause for us, right? 
Did any one of those events that we did tonight or today or last night, were they earth shattering? Only heaven knows. Some maybe, some maybe they were part of, just tell me another story, Grandpa. Just make up a story. Because there's something about the big picture that those are very important. So, us with big boy brains, big analytical brains with file cabinets that go to the, clear to the ceiling. You know, and we gotta have everything compartmentalized and judged. I mean, you know, evaluated or something. Anyway, us big guys, if we're not careful, we'll miss out on little Johnny's making a C and making an A. And Grandpa, tell me another story. And the bonds of interaction between us and the Spirit of God. If we miss out, they won't get built. Then we'll get established. At the same time, if we enter in and engage with them and realize, I'm just a pre-K guy right now, you know? I'm just trying to find my way. But like this afternoon, Jerry heard from the Lord. And then Sylvia heard from the Lord and Kendra heard from the Lord. And I forget who else did the, the eagle thing over here. You realize, why, by golly, once in a while we hit pay dirt, you know? This has got like real yield to it, you know? And so I just want to say, be easy on ourselves right now. Don't make everything have to be a big deal. We're not gonna swallow anything hook, line, and sinker. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just hold everything kind of loosely. But don't opt out. Don't get distracted. And don't get discouraged. Because God wants to take us to some place 12 years down the road that little Johnny had no idea where he was going in the beginning. You and I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's touched me. You and I are gonna go in and out of the heavens as easy as we breathe. <gasps> that's in heaven, <sighs> that's out of heaven. There won't be any hurdles. It'll just be, well, Jesus said in John 10, 9, if you learn to go through me, the door, you will go in and out and find pasture. I'm quoting Jesus. You go in and out. That's how you're going to find food. Your nourishment, your sustenance in life will be from going in and out. And you and I are going to do that as easy as we breathe in and out. But way more than that, we're going to begin, begin moving in the heavenlies with partnerships, even friendships, with the greater family of God which includes species beyond humans and saints. You, got, you and I are going to have best friendships with angels, and I dare say even saints. And we're going to find ourselves very empowered. Not that God couldn't empower us. He's, he's capable of doing all the empowerment. He always could, and when we're very, very young in the Lord, He wanted to be our total and complete. And I think I need to open up one more thought. When we're young, we don't have the capacity to love like we do when we get older. When we're young, there's only one person in our life that's really important. That's little baby and mama. And well, baby should have been up here. But anyway, you get the point. Uh, Baby and mama, that's all there is in life for the baby. Mama is the biggest deal ever. And mama is total stimuli of everything, from food to comfort to changing my diaper to everything. And so there's no more capacity. Little Johnny has no capacity to love beyond his mama. That's all there is. Shortly, mommy introduces him to daddy. It's like, daddy? That's interesting. I got a daddy. He's got a beard. Looks scruffy. 
you don't have that nice, sweet voice that Mama has, you know. And like, I'm supposed to love him? Yes, little Sonny, you're going to fall in love with him. So now we got a threesome. Little Johnny's learning to love not just Mama, but Daddy too. Well, that's pretty cool. His love, which was completely and only devoted to Mama, has grown. Pretty soon he's going to have siblings. Little Susie, little Timmy, little Johnny, little, you know, he's just got a bunch of siblings. And then he's got neighbor kids, you know. And pretty soon he's got a teacher in the grade school. It's like, oh my gosh, he's growing. And then pretty soon he has a boss. And it's like, my world is expanding. Oh, and then little Johnny one time, sometime down the road, meets this little something and she has the sweetest smell. Oh, and she's the cutest thing in the whole world. And he's smitten in love with her. Oh, has he compromised his love for mama? Is this illegal to love somebody like I love mama? No way, I can't love her. Mama, now this is not exactly how it goes down, but go with me. Mama, is it okay if I love her like I love you? And Mama says, little Johnny, I knew that was going to happen. That's in the healthy life cycle. That's in the healthy life of every human being. You're going to grow up from babyhood to childhood to adolescence to adulthood and you're going to meet another adult that you're going to be in love with and then guess what you're going to do? You're going to have more little bambinos. And you're going to love them. And then one of these days, you're going to have spiritual sons and daughters that you're going to love. And pretty soon you're going to have sheepfolds that you're responsible for. And you're a father and a mother to them and you love them and you'd lay oh, <laughs> you'd lay down your life for them you would die for them now little johnny had no idea back here that he would ever have the capacity to love that much and yet never violate his love for his mama debbie says it well the word umbilical cord is a really important word it's, it applies to only one person in my life and one person in your life. It applies to your mama. And so mama's always going to have that initial supreme kind of priority position in your life because she gave you life at least for nine months with the help of daddy at the beginning. Anyway, <laughs> And so umbilical cord is really good. And so you see the big buff football guys, you know, come out there on a the football player and the camera comes up, mom, mom, hey, we're number one. I'll see you at Thanksgiving. I hope you got uh, pumpkin pie on the table. I'll be there, mom, you know. Why? Because moms are really important, even though they're big old burly guys, you know, big old brutes of a guy. They haven't forsaken or forgotten the love for the mama. I understand there are broken places in this world where this does not apply, but you know what I'm saying. This is the optimum way that most of humanity is supposed to work under the design of the Lord. Now, what am I saying here? I believe that when we're young, Father God says, me and Jesus are going to be your main deal, and I'm giving you Holy Spirit to help you. Which, by the way, that's kind, of a, that's kind of an interesting commentary right there. I thought you were only supposed to love Jesus, you know. He's the one that uh, died for me, right? That paid the price. Jesus said, uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he's just like me. Whatever you like about me, he's the same. So what I want to do is introduce you to your Father so that you can love him like you love me. That's John 16, I believe it is. He says, uh, uh, and your father will love you because you believed me. You believed me when I spoke about my father. You believed me and if my father's gonna love you. Anyway, uh, so then Jesus says, um, I know you're supposed to love me, but uh, it's better if I leave. 
I'm going to leave now and I'm going to send you somebody else. It's going to be your comforter, your guide, your strength. Your, he's going to come alongside you. It's going to be better for you. Just trust me. It's going to be better for you. It's like, Jesus, I thought you were the only one. And you pointed me to Father and now you're leaving and now i got to do this new guy. Now there's three places that our love had to grow. And then Jesus and Father say, you know what? I got a whole family of God in the heavenlies that as I watch your maturity level, I'm watching how, remember little Johnny growing up? I'm watching how you're growing. Hmm. I think you can handle a personal angel and not leave your, your first love for Father God. You not leave it behind. I believe you're old enough now you can handle the next ingredient, the next stop, the step, the next phase. And pretty soon he's got the next level of the family of God and the next level and the next level. And that's why I said earlier, I believe that we'll have partnerships, even friendships, maybe even BFFs, <laughs> best friends with the angels that Father gives to us. And he says, I got confidence. You'll not forget me. You know, the truth is, and I say this with all sincerity, this is a big deal for me, that my love stays supreme or paramount with Father God and Jesus. That's, this is a really big deal. So I'm checking my heart every once in a while. And how do I check my heart? I check my heart to see if the fun stuff that I'm doing is not taking my passion and my devotion away from the one. I do love the fun stuff. I'm a pioneer. I love new things. Give me a new squirrel running by, a shiny new object, you know, as long as I don't leave. So how do I know if I haven't left my first love? I'm going to quote Bill Johnson. I'll wrap this up in a second. Bill Johnson says, when I'm more than two weeks away from tears, I know what I have to do. Now, why do, I, why do I highlight tears? Tears in my book, in my world, in my life, indicate whether my uh, heart is tender or not. You see, if I run after some shiny new object, see, it doesn't have the power to give me life. It doesn't have the power to nurture life. There's only one source abiding in the vine, right? If I get out here, it doesn't have the power to produce life. And so now I get into rhetoric, theology, cold hard facts. I get into religiosity, religion, and I'm hurting people with whatever I've learned because I forgot the central essence of falling in love with Jesus. And so how do I measure whether my heart is still or whether my heart's still tender, like you uh, accused me of today, Jerry, and rightfully so. I don't mind being called or, or uh, affiliated with having a tender heart and uh, eye problems. <laughs> uh, so tonight I say that, all of this, to... Uh, console and comfort some of your hearts who you feel like things are a little slow. Were things a little slow for Johnny when he was learning the ABCs? <laughs> Way slow and not even relevant to him. But it was still very important. And you and I are walking into new territories that are extremely important in the big picture because they begin to create the framework of relationship, love, history, track record, expansiveness of, oh, I remember somebody said this. Like, for instance, after this afternoon and tonight, I don't think I'm going to forget about flight angels. You see, if somebody hadn't brought that up, if somebody hadn't mentioned it, and if we hadn't had this amazing experience last uh, in the afternoon and an hour ago or so, I might not think of it next time. But I will now. 
And I'll remember Jerry. And I'll remember the video. I told him, I said, I'm, I'm taking that video. I've got that one in my archive right now. I will definitely be using that one. So just ease up. Take it easy. God's got you on a good journey. Stay plugged in. Stay in the company of those who are going after the things that you value. The things that have gripped your heart. Don't be distracted. Don't be saying, well, life got busy and I just kind of forgot about that. Yeah, we all do that from time to time, but you know, just let your heart be marinated and, and captivated and taken love prisoner. Yeah. So I want to make a declaration over you again and uh, I don't know, maybe put your hands on your heart, I guess. Father God, you, you proved your love just so many times. And uh, <laughs> by now, uh, I hope we never forget that. I just hope we don't, Lord. And, and I tend to. I, I'm prone to. But you're such a good God. We sang about it earlier. And so we're going to believe your word. That you're a good God. And you've got us in a process. As we prayed a while ago and, and over different ones. You got a good process and you're going to finish or complete the good work that you've begun in us. And right now, uh, Father, we feel like little Johnny that's in the classroom. And boy, do we want to maybe do something else more fun or whatever. And you're just saying, no, be patient, be patient. So Lord, I bless each one of our hearts to believe, to believe. To believe that you really will finish the work you began. You're a good God. So, Lord, just speak with hearts are going to marinate, be established, anchored, unshakable in the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God that you will get to your inheritance. Look at me if you don't mind. I declare over you the word of the Lord. He says, I will complete the good work. Did he do a good work in you? Did he start a good work in you? He says, I'm going to complete the good work that I begin in you. Don't chafe. Don't get anxious. Don't bail out. Stay in the process. One step at a time, baby steps is all is necessary. I will complete the good work that it began in you. Amen. Okay, let's let's maybe finish it.
is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all. Let's see, there was surely, and then there was mercy, and then there the, it's the three goodness sisters running after you, and they're going to follow you. And So just stop once in a while, let them catch up, all right? <laughs> all right, anybody got a capstone kind of thought, a picture, impression that you want to interject at this point? Come on, Joe. Okay, come on up, Cohen. I've kind of been sitting on this most of the night. This song that we just sang, we sang in my son's uh, celebration service going home last year, last October 19th. And um, as we were singing this song, <clears throat> and we were singing, his goodness is running after me, and I'm just kind of weeping over the, his casket, and just missing him. And I have a vision of, of Jesus and my son Justin above the casket. And Justin is, he was quadriplegic, but now he was fully uh, arms moving, legs moving. He was clothed in a crystal garment. And he was, and he, this joy was just emanating from his, from his face. And, and I'm looking up and I'm, and I'm just weeping. And he says, dad, don't weep. Don't weep, keep your eyes on Jesus. And uh, so I'm sharing that. I just felt like that would be apropos for, um, you know, for us. It's real. The stuff that we're experiencing, it kind of sometimes seems a little, you know, we're not sure what we're doing. We're kind of experimenting. But when it really comes down to it, heaven is real. And, and heaven is in us. And, we're, and the veil is very thin. And so, um, amen. God bless. Um, mine just had to do with the song that Leanne sang. I think the little ditty chorus was, I'll never be the same again, or was that it? And for me, I don't know what you meant by it, but it was like every day that I'm in his presence, if I put myself in his presence so I'm here, even if I'm don't feel much because I'm learning my slow alphabets. I'm never going to be the same again. And for me, that was like a huge revelation tonight. Like, oh, I just need to believe I'm never going to be the same again. It's like from glory to glory, even though I may not see it day to day, a year from now, 10 years from now. Yeah. Job never be the same ever again. Uh, the increase of his government and his peace, there shall, be no there shall be no end. And I'm part of that kingdom. So, of my increase, there shall be no end. Can I use the whiteboard? Sure. All right. You put it in race. It's fine. It's So, um, uh, earlier tonight, I, um, I felt like I had like a stake through my heart and it was causing me physical and also spiritual pain. And I, I felt stuck, like I was bound by chains. And so I raised my hand 
over there and I was prayed over and I was released from that. I was freed. The stake is not in my heart and I felt like like my heart and then everything around it just got so warm and it was just it's indescribable how good it felt. And then um Oh, what was your name? Uh, he said, um, uh, you, you have the freedom to worship the Lord as you want. And, you know, I was, I don't, <laughs> I don't like going in front of a bunch of people. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm going to go sit in the chair like I wanted to do ever since I got here. And uh, as soon as I sat down, I was just like, wow. And I was just talking to the Lord, and then you said something about a river, and I just like felt like I was under it, and like the current was hitting me. And then that river turned into that vortex, and it kept swirling around the room. And then I was taken up through the vortex, and I was meeting with God. And I have always been told what I'm seeing, but I've never actually seen it, but this time I saw it. And, um,. So here comes, here comes me, I, and I'm here, you know, I have this, you know, little bitty heart and with a little hole missing, right? And I was like, hey God, can, can you help me? And he's like, sure. Oh. Here, here's, uh, here's that, you know, because he, cause he uh, broke his heart, you know, broke it and gave me way, <laughs> way more in that little circle, right? And um, then <laughs> um, here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I saw this uh, like a little boy, right? And <laughs> Is, uh, is, is this like me or something playing with you in heaven? He's like, no. I was like, who is it? It's Elijah. And I was like, who's Elijah? He's like, your future son. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, only, I'm only 17. Why are you showing me this now, you know? <laughs> and he's like, I th it's something important, you know? And he was, he was playing with Elijah and... <laughs> and um, I, I went to go give Elijah a piece of my heart, like um, God gave me and God said, wait. And then a stream, like, of, I don't even know, connected my heart to God's and we were connected. And then he said, watch this, and he pointed to Elijah, and that beam that was connecting me to him also connected Elijah's heart to God, and then Elijah's heart connected to mine, and it was like a triangle, like, the, you know, the Trinity. And then I just stayed there for a little bit, and, he, and then he sent me back down through the vortex, and it was just crazy, I was spinning, you know? And then I was like, I got to tell everybody this. I got to tell everybody this. I couldn't move my body. <laughs> it, was, it was so heavy. Um, I couldn't move. I finally managed to lift my eye, open my eyes, and I was trying to, I moved my head. And then I was like, oh. And I was just like, all right, you want me to stay here? I'm going to stay here. But yeah. Wow. Cool. Why don't you stand right here? So this is Cohen, and... Uh... I don't know if you guys probably named him for this, but uh, in Hebrew, Cohen is the name of the priest, the high priest. So, so uh, uh, you know, he's wearing a pretty heavy duty mantle here for a name, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, what do you say we just bless him with the heart of the Father? You know, the, the hole in the heart seemed like it's getting healed up, and God's giving him a big part of his own heart to Cohen. So, Lord, thank you for Cohen. We bless him, Lord, even at this young age. And uh, it seems like there's some knowledge, some awareness of some future things, the kind of heavy-duty stuff. 
And so, Lord, you're going to have to strengthen his heart to be able to, to go the distance. And then we come alongside him, all of us, right? We come alongside him, Lord, to strengthen him for the journey, to make safe passage into the inheritance that you have for him. Safe passage <laughs> into your inheritance for him, Lord. Yeah, you're good, Lord. He's, uh, everybody, uh, just, uh, Cohen has been unusually sensitive, kind of surprisingly sensitive to things of the Spirit. And so, Lord, uh, I feel like we're supposed to uh, invoke uh, angelic help to strengthen him as he walks into uh, pretty high-powered uh, territory to help, uh, hold him stable, to stabilize him, to keep him safe in the passage through uh, potentially tumultuous, tumultuous waters and bring him into tall stature, uh, full adulthood in the spirit, a man of God with great stature and uh, great depth. We bless him, Lord Jesus. Angels, there you go. You got a commission now. And you're going to help take Cohen to all the dreams that Father has for him. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's more. Um, also, um, kind of an activation thing. Um, uh, he, I'm also supposed to share this. So, um, uh, I left that heavy, dense presence sitting in that chair, and all you have to do is go over there and scoop it up. Uh, just a warning, when you do scoop it up, you will not be able to move. So um, be prepared, and uh, you're probably not going to move past where you picked it up, but you're invited to. Uh, when you were 17, were you experiencing things like that? <laughs> Good job, buddy. <laughs> Good job. All right, we're going to wrap it up tonight. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, Craig and Linda and uh, his, their daughter, Molly, are going to create an atmosphere and an, a way, uh, an opportunity for us to sketch out our heavenly places. So uh, we, got, we got sketch pads, uh, notepads, and pencils and papers and crayons for all us kids of all ages. And so we're gonna have a good time with that. I'm gonna have Teresa Part of the time tomorrow come up and we're going to inquire we're going to let you feel her heart i'm going to ask her some leading questions so that you can feel how she responds you're going to fall in love with her childlikeness of love for jesus simple devotion that is so infectious you're going to love that big time i think one of our activations is we might go into the mind of god and just spend a little time there i have found that to be uh uh, unusually stimulating and uh, and uh, new thoughts come maybe because we're in the mind of God or something I don't know but uh, then we have another great meal tomorrow night is you guys remember that last night or last time Mike Town, who used to live in Africa for a number of years he learned a recipe of uh, African meal Oh, you won't want to stop. And there's going to be plenty, so you, you will love that big time. Nine o'clock, be here for coffee and uh, all kinds of snacky stuff. Um, Leanne and Carl are going to lead worship tomorrow morning. And so that'll be fun. And uh, let me see, was there anything else? Oh, we'll see. The rest of it, we'll just go with the flow. All right. You guys, here's one last thing I wanted to say as I was just, while Lydia was singing the last song, I feel the pride, the great approval of Father God over you. I feel like he's like, my kids, my kids. I love my kids. They're doing so good. I mean, they're stepping into territories that few have gone into and their hearts are gripped and yet they love me they love me you're making your father proud you're making him a happy camper a happy daddy so go with God be happy get rested have a really great dream tell us about it when you get here in the morning see ya <laughs> <laughs>